Uh, for more on the fight against coronavirus, uh, we want to welcome uh, Michael Ostrom. Uh, he is the director of the University of Minnesota's Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy. Uh, help us this morning. Uh, what are you seeing out there that's, that's positive? I'm hoping. Well, I think, yeah, well, first of all, thank you for having me on. Uh, I think the world is finally waking up that we cannot ignore this, whether it be a public health issue, a, uh, a medical issue, or even a business issue. And I'm optimistic that we are now finally having the discussions and taking the actions that we really needed to do to address this. Do you think that we're going to bend the curve? I mean, you look at some of the numbers in Italy, you've looked at some of the numbers in, in South Korea and elsewhere. Where do you think we really stand? Well, I think, first of all, there's a tremendous misconception about bending the curve. Uh, you know, this virus is likely going to be here until we have a vaccine, which I'm, if I were to be optimistic, I'd say 18 months. And every time we try to bend the curve, as you discussed, we're suppressing cases, but all we're doing is postponing those cases. We're not eliminating them. And so I think the challenge is, is how many cases can we suppress or prevent until we get a vaccine? I, I hear this notion that we'll be in it till April and then August. I think we're going to be in this for many, many months, uh, and, and uh, that's, we have to bend the curve every day, not just well, one time. Well, look, the great conundrum is the more you try to bend the curve, the longer this actually is going to take place for, and the more, arguably, hopefully, will help with the human damage, but we will also create economic damage. And so there's going to be this exactly. very complicated, I hate to say that there should even be a balance, because I think that the, the human element is so critical here, and, and nobody's going to, I think people are going to say whatever it costs, it costs, but uh, that's where we are. I think you, you said it very well. Uh, you know, it, we have to con continue to consider what it means to die from this virus. It's a very, very difficult and tragic situation, but we also have to have a conversation about how we're going to live with it, and we have to figure that out. Uh, you know, are these kind of measures that we're taking right now, do they work, number one, and number two, do, do we envision in America that for the next 18 months we'll be in complete lockdown? I, I, right now, we just heard the numbers from China. And uh, as soon as China goes back to work and people are back on subways and trains and, and, uh, and all the different forms of, of transportation, and when they're cheek to jowl in manufacturing plants, when they're in public places, I, for one, believe that we're going to see a resurgence of cases so back do you, in China. Have we China. made a mistake then? Not, is, this, is this approach a mistake? I mean, you, what you're advocating, it no. sounds like it's a little bit like what Boris Johnson was doing up until about 48 hours ago. No, I'm not suggesting that we shouldn't try to bend the curve. What I'm saying that is, we're, just as you articulated so well, we have a natural tension here. Postponing cases means that they're just going to happen later, which means that we continue to drag this out. That's the hope. We have to do that. Uh, but we ho the hope also includes having a vaccine then that one day will get us out. Otherwise, eventually, you know, the 20 to 60 percent of Americans that, we're, that we believe will get this will get this. Right. And so our hope is that we suppress it, but uh, we will only be saved, really, when we have a vaccine. Hey, Michael, definitely. I get your point, and I agree with you 100 percent. I understand about trying to bend the curve. But if you're right, and if this lasts for 18 months, and every time anybody leaves and goes back to school, goes back to home, or back to work after that, um, you almost start to think that you're better off getting sick earlier rather than later before you've seen the health care system overrun while there's still, you know, ventilators around, while there's still beds around. You know, you asked me at the top of this interview, you know, what's the good news? Just the very fact that you just said that, that's good news. We're starting to think about this in a much more realistic way. It's not knee-jerk. It's not pie in the sky. It's not, uh, oh, we're all going to die. And it's not also, it's not a problem. This is hard. This is really hard. But we can get through this. But we're going to have to have the very discussion that you just articulated so well. We have to learn to both how we're going to die with this virus, but also how we're going to live with it. And that's, to me, the most important message today.